those of you who don't know, I served in the U.S. Navy from 2001 to 2014. Had the opportunity to deploy to Iraq multiple times with SEAL Team 3. One of my qualifications was as a sniper. We are highly trained in various aspects of military operation, weaponry, technology, tactics, and all sorts of mission sets to include executive protect protection. With that background, it's evident to me that many basic security measures were completely dropped. That being said, you do not have to have a background in special operations to recognize the incompetence and security failures that led to the ca catastrophic vulnerabilities surrounding President Trump and the crowd that day. I hear from Americans every day in complete disbelief in the wake of two assassination attempts in two and a half months that cannot believe how ineffective our Secret Service has become. There's simply no excuse. I'm glad I can testify today to share some insight into the operational fail failures of that fateful day. Rep Mills and I visited Butler, Pennsylvania rally site immediately following the assassination attempt to investigate. I've also visited the site with Homeland Security Chairman Mark Green and my colleagues on the committee. Some of the main challenges facing Secret Service were completely avoidable. For example, we investigated the second floor window. Secret Service agents and local law enforcement had access to overlooking the roof from where the shooter engaged the former president. I was able to confirm that had anyone stationed in the second story at AGR building come off of their weapon system, moved to the window, and looked out the window during their search to reacquire Thomas Crooks, they would have seen him within 30 to 40 yards of that position. He would have easily been spotted lying on that roof with no camouflage in his rifle. We were able to confirm that former Secret Service Director Cheadle was lying to Congress when she gave us the excuse that the roof was too slanted, too dangerous for Secret Service snipers to take up counter sniper positions. But as myself and others who went up on that roof, it was not steep at all. Ironically, the positions that Secret Service counter snipers posted themselves upon were actually far steeper than that roof at the AGR building. Furthermore, Secret Service did not have any of its counter snipers on a nearby water tower the tallest structure at the farm show grounds. I knew immediately upon setting foot at that site, and Mr. Chairman, you were there as well, that that's exactly where I would have placed myself as a counter sniper because of its commanding view over the entire property. Not only would any counter sniper have been able to easily engage Thomas Crooks from that position that he attempted to assassinate former President Trump, but it's very likely that Thomas Crooks might have decided to abort his mission and go home had we had counter snipers on that water tower. The thing that we need to understand about security is how important deterrence is. Had Thomas Crooks visually spotted or located counter snipers with the use of his drone that day, it is very likely that he would recognize that he would have been deterred long before ever getting into that position capable of having a direct line of sight to the podium and to President Trump and would have possibly aborted his mission. Rep Mills and I also arranged several other buildings and windows that were well within range for anyone with the desire to assassinate the former president. Upon our investigation that day, we were, in, we were informed that nobody was posted on nor had conducted any advance work amongst these very choice and accessible firing positions. Rep Mills and I both concluded within minutes of observation from the same exact positions used by Secret Service counter snipers that this was a horrible venue for a rally and Secret Service should have done everything possible to dissuade the campaign from hosting it there. To date, we have seen no evidence that Secret Service tried to dissuade the campaign from using the site due to the alarming threat profiles surrounding the site. Though I appreciate the former president's courage and strong desire to rally his supporters, I strongly suggest that he and his campaign avoid this site on October 5th and in the future, which leads me to my, my most concerning assessment now of both assassination attempts on the former president. I cannot be more clear. To this point, we have been extremely lucky. Whether either of these individuals were working in coordination with other groups, organizations, or nation states who desired to kill the former president, none of the individuals attempting to kill the president have been professionals. I can tell you that with authority by the weaponry and the gear they used, as well as the fact that Thomas Crooks took a headshot, I can tell you from experience that most snipers are trained to take center mass torso shots, if possible, 
for the very exact reason that we saw him miss a headshot on July 13th. I can also tell by examining Ryan Ruth's final firing position on the fence line of the golf course that he too was not a professional. No trained sniper, no trained assassin would have set up their final firing position the way he did. We are trained to make absolute sure that nothing on our person or in the vicinity of where we are located and going to take our final shots, that anything stands out from the environment we are in. You could see those large bags holding ballistic plates on the fence, which would easily catch the eye of any trained security agent. He also stuck his barrel through the fence instead of cutting what we call a loophole in it so that he could stay back in the shadows allowing his concealment. I want to reiterate to date these individuals that have tried to assassinate former President Trump are not professionals. What is going to happen, Mr. Chairman, when the, for, when the president of Iran, China, Russia, or any other country or group who, who does not want to see President Trump come back into office send professionals? What is going to happen next time if there is a 10-man Hezbollah team, snipers, assaulters, and drone, operator, drone operators launching coordinated and overlapping assassination attempt on the president? I think we can all see by now that their likelihood of success would be tremendous. My suggestion to the former president and to his campaign is that he beef up his private security detail of individuals who are loyal to him and not burdened by the bureaucracy and culture of an organization that many of us used to hold in very high esteem. The reason for this is so they can plug holes that Secret Service continues to leave and make sure they are not putting him in vulnerable situations. It is important that these investigations and oversight continue to make sure that in the coming days, weeks, and months, and even years, that this is no longer a regular occur occurrence and not even a possibility. I want to challenge this task force to continue doing the great work that they are doing here today. And I also want to challenge them to have enough courage to think outside the box, challenge the mainstream narratives, and be willing to investigate every theory regardless of how conspiratorial others might claim them to be. There is a concern from the American people that this task force will be like most investigations in Washington, D.C. that lead to zero accountability and transparency and simply call for money for an organization that desperately needs reforms at its core.